Now, if you guys remember from our rational functions days, this is what we call a complex fraction. And the way that I like to eliminate complex fractions or simplify them was to multiply by the LCD, which in this case would be 4. When I multiply everything times 4, I get 4 minus 1 over 1, which equals 3. Fair enough, rather easy. Now, here, I don't really have any LCDs. I have trigonometric functions. But again, in the last example we found, sometimes writing our expression in fractional form makes it easier to simplify. So I, can't, I could write cosines 1 over secant, right? But if I want to try doing everything in sines and cosines, I'm going to leave cosine as it is. So I'll leave cosine of theta minus 1 over cosine of theta divided by 1 over cosine of theta. Now everything's in terms of sines and cosines. And I recognize that my common denominator of all of these would be c c cosine. So if I multiply by cosine of theta and do just like I did up here, I'm going to end up with a cosine squared of theta minus 1 all over 1. And therefore, I think, ooh, cosine squared, that reminds me of my Pythagorean identities. So cosine squared minus 1 equals, don't say sine squared. No. S cosine squared minus 1 equals, don't say sine squared, <laughs> negative, sine. negative sine squared. Good job. Remember, guys. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. Again, you'll have this provided to you. But watch. If I'm going to get cosine squared minus 1, I would have to subtract a 1, right? This is what I want to solve for. So that means I've got to get rid of sine. So I'd have to subtract. Okay. That's why it's a negative sine squared. Okay. Just real quick, uh, 